Well, it's a brand new year, and 2016 is going to be characterised by a gradual ramping up in Mars One's activities as they build towards the final rounds of the astronaut selection process in September. Whilst this will certainly involve an expansion in the permanent staff at Mars One, the project is increasingly eager to involve volunteers from around the world in all the activities being planned for the next stages of their operations. So whether your expertise is in creative disciplines such as graphical design or video processing, or perhaps in science and engineering, or even in finance or law, if you feel you have a unique skill set that you would like to contribute, Mars One would love to hear from you. If you're potentially interested then in volunteering, I'll post a link down below to Mars One's registration form. This past month started with the publication of a new article over on the Mars Exchange, where Mars One's mission concept artist Brian Versteeg explained the process that went into the design of the graphical illustrations of Mars One's base architecture. In the first of two parts, he explains the scientific principles and human requirements that were fed into his designs, whilst in the second part he explores base expansion strategies and how the living conditions on Mars and in the settlement could influence the development of the fledgling society. Both articles you'll find down in the description. But of course, before you can have any kind of society on Mars, you need to have a sustainable life support system architecture, which in Mars One's case is being developed by the Paragon Space Development Corporation. So to find out more, on January 7th, I sat down with Paragon's Chief Engineer Barry Finger to address a number of public questions which have emerged since Paragon's initial life support assessment was released to the public last July. Now you can check out the interview itself just over there, but perhaps the point that most of you will find perhaps most interesting is that Paragon have now completed the initial Mars suit design study commissioned by Mars One. So this will be released to the public once passing export control with the US State Department, so keep an eye out for it in the future. But ultimately, I'm hoping that this is just the first of what will become a somewhat regular series of question and answer videos, exploring many of the enabling technologies required for Mars One's mission. The next such interview will be taking place on February 11th, so if you do have more questions for Paragon, then by all means post them down below for inclusion in this upcoming interview. This past month has seen a number of public talks by Mars One, with two notable examples being from Mars One CEO Bas Lansdorp in New York, and from Mars One Ambassador and Nobel Prize winner Professor Herard de Hooft in Singapore. But Mars One's astronaut candidates also play a significant role in presenting the project to the public, and particularly by discussing human Mars exploration in schools around the world. So I often like to highlight some of the outreach activity that different candidates have been doing, and so for this month I would like to turn the spotlight over to Dr. Jeremy Sargay, a parabolic flight physician and France's representative in the Mars 100. Dr. Sargay has been travelling around France speaking about Mars One this past month, and also about what he sees as a trend of widening of participation in human spaceflight endeavours, both in the present and in the future. So if you want to check out one of his talks in French, here's an example just over here, or you can catch him on the next stop on his tour in Bordeaux. In other Mars One global news, there was a surge of media interest surrounding the project over in the Philippines in January, following a visit by American candidate and metal sourcing company CEO Jamie Del Rosario, who originally was born in the Philippines. So fun little bonus fact actually, so Jamie's company is actually one of the suppliers for raw materials for SpaceX. But whilst over there, as well as doing various media events, Jamie had the opportunity to meet her fellow candidate Minerva, which is part of one of just many meetups amongst candidates that we've been organising around the world in preparation for the next rounds in the selection process. As we sweep around the world, South African candidate Adriana Marais has been doing the media rounds, appearing in newspaper, radio, major TV, and even being featured on the front page of Tech Insider magazine. 
Now it's been somewhat similar for me up here in Cambridge, admittedly to a lesser extent, because local media seem to have discovered that I exist, believe it or not. Uh, possibly I lost my hiding and my cover after appearing on a local radio interview discussing ESA astronaut Tim Peake's recent spacewalk on the International Space Station. And then as we continue flying over to the west, over to North America, Canadian candidate Karen Cumming has delivered a talk at an astronomical society, whilst American candidate Sonia Van Meter presented at the University of Texas Club down in Austin. But the best may be yet to come, as Australian candidate Josh Richards has partnered with 20th Century Fox to spend five days living in a replica Mars habitat down in Sydney to commemorate the release of The Martian on DVD. Josh will be entering the habitat this upcoming Monday, February 8th, and will be going through unique challenges, ordeals, and simulated emergencies as he attempts to become Australia's Mark Watney. And well, I certainly hope he likes potatoes to say the least. I mean, I will certainly be following Josh's endeavours, which will be communicated across the world via a 24-hour live webcast. So I hope you'll join me in wishing Josh the best of luck in this unique opportunity that's presented itself, and I'll post a link down below if you want to follow his adventure. With regards to something that you might want to look out for over the next month or so, on February 23rd, Mars One's book, Humanity's Next Great Adventure, will be published and available to buy on Amazon. Edited by Dr Norbert Kraft, Mars One's Chief Medical Officer, the book focuses on the various skills and training required for humans to go to Mars, interviews with various candidates, explanations of Mars One's crew selection process, and then also exploring what life may be like for the early settlers on Mars. So if you want to find out more about the book, or even pre-order if you're so inclined, you can check that all out over on its Amazon page, which I'll also link to down in the description. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in to my Jason 3 launch hangout on January 17th, in which I was joined by my fellow Mars 100 candidates Oscar Matthews and Christian Knudsen to offer a live commentary on SpaceX's latest barge landing attempt. Though the attempt, unfortunately, was not entirely successful this time, I hope you'll join me for future launch hangouts, the next of which will be for the SES-9 launch in late February. The link to watch this hangout will be posted and advertised on this channel, as well as over on Twitter at Martian Colonist in the run-up to the launch. Or alternatively, if you would like to join me in the hangout as a guest panellist, just drop me a message and I'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates on the Mars One project on the first Saturday of each month, as well as explorations in planetary science, astrophysics and human spaceflight. For this month's feature video, we have an in-depth interview with American Mars One candidate Jamie Del Rosario. Now I've got plenty of great content coming up, including an interview with Professor Mike Brown on Planet Nine, and by popular request, I'll be revisiting orbital mechanics in a two-part video where I will derive Kepler's laws of planetary motion. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter, subscribe, and comment down below to join the conversation.